2016 ushered in some of the best games we've played in years, like Overwatch and Uncharted 4, while simultaneously causing the internet to break down thanks to colossal disappointments like No Man's Sky. We also saw the release of multiple games that have been in development hell for a literal 9 plus years, like Final Fantasy XV and The Last Guardian. Regardless of how you felt about it, 2016 has gone the way of the dodo, ushering in the brand spanking new year of 2017. And even though it's early on, there are already some very cool titles on the way. I'm Dave Control with Arcade Cloud, and today we're going to take a look at our picks for the nine most anticipated games of 2017. Number 9, South Park The Fractured But Whole. In 2014, developer Obsidian Entertainment did the unthinkable. They created a great game based on the TV series South Park, a feat that even series creator Trey Parker and Matt Stone didn't think was possible. I mean, have you played the previous South Park games? South Park 64 is, well, you get to throw pea-coated snowballs at people, so that's okay, I guess? South Park The Stick of Truth was a bigger success than anybody would thought, essentially coming off as a playable season of the raunchy cartoon with light and easy to understand RPG elements. Trey Parker and Matt Stone promised that if they thought Stick of Truth was received well enough, a sequel would follow. In 2017, they'll make good on that promise, if this new game doesn't face as many delays as the Stick of Truth. South Park the Fracture Butt Hole picks up immediately after Stick of Truth, where the boys realize that the fantasy genre is lame, and turn their attention towards the comic book film genre. Cartman is in the midst of planning his very own Coon and Friends cinematic universe, but about half of the children disagree with the franchise's trajectory, and a civil war war then ensues. Players once again take on the role of the new kid, who can assume one of 12 superhero personas, like a speedster, cyborg, or karate kid. Unfortunately, Obsidian Entertainment will not be returning to develop this installment, with publisher Ubisoft passing the torch to their very own Ubisoft San Francisco helming the project. So, while there's a reason for concern, with Manitre at the helm once again, the fractured but whole has an opportunity to be another gem. Also, the name is a juvenile pun and we love it. Number 8, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Still have the horrible taste of 2016's Umbrella Corps fresh in your mouth, or perhaps the 2015 cancellation of PT, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard might be the palate cleanser you need. While recent Resident Evil games have become more action-y third-person shooters, this installment of the legendary franchise looks to return to its horror roots, but with a twist. While every game in the main series has been played from a third-person perspective, Resident Evil 7 looks to up the terror by changing the perspective to first person, and not at all because PT was so highly praised and Capcom's using a similar concept. It's definitely not for that reason. Capcom has decided to strip the game of the franchise's recent craving for more action in favor of something more akin to survival horror, so make every shot count. This creative direction is reflected in the game's story, which follows a new series protagonist named Ethan, and believe you me, he's no Chris Redfield with his boulder-punching ridiculousness. He's just a poor, innocent civilian searching for his wife Mia in a zombie-infested mansion, so his combat efficacy is minimal. If placing the game in the first-person perspective wasn't horrifying enough for you, you may want to get the PlayStation VR version of the game to induce more of that trauma you so dearly crave, you psycho. Number 7, Neo. After releasing its alpha and beta for players to check out in 2016, Neo holds up to his promise of being a cross between Ninja Gaiden and Dark Souls. The game slows down the combat pacing to make every attack feel important and methodical, with parries and dodging being critical to fighting, similar to the Dark Souls franchise. Meanwhile, it maintains combos players can utilize and unlock for a multitude of weapons, showing off Team Ninja's Ninja Gaiden roots. The result? A unique feeling combat system implemented into a samurai mythos. I had the chance to play the beta last year, and the game not only impressed me, but proved another team outside of From Software could handle making a game inspired by the Souls series, but fresh enough to feel original. And in true Souls fashion, or is that Ninja Gaiden fashion, Neo is hard. I'm talking throw your controller against the wall, light it on fire, then burn your entire house down hard. Because remember, while Dark Souls is what people currently think of as a synonym for challenge, Ninja Gaiden is the OG rage inducing game. And call me a masochist, but I love it. Number 6, Spider Man. 2017 is going to be a huge year for Marvel's web slinging poster boy Spider Man. Not only is the web head set to make his solo debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Spider-Man Homecoming, he's also got a pretty big game on the horizon as well called, wait for it, Spider-Man. This isn't your older brother's cheesy tie-in to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 on the GameCube, even though that game was pretty fun. In fact, it's not a movie tie-in at all. Much like David S. Pumpkins, this new Spider-Man game is its own thing, not tied to any previously established Spider-Man continuities, so the narrative possibilities are endless. Spider-Man aims to do for Spidey games what Arkham Asylum did for Batman games, 
is being developed exclusively for the PlayStation 4 by Insomniac Games. You know, the guys and girls behind Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, Resistance and Sunset Overdrive. Some, some pretty good games. The player will assume the role of a very experienced Spider-Man in an interactive open world New York City. On top of defending Manhattan's 9 million plus population from lunatics dressed as vultures and goblins, players will have to balance Peter Parker's vigilantism with both his professional career, social life, and family. Spider-Man on the PS4 is looking to be the Spider-Man game fans have never experienced but always dreamed of. So, here are work all day or fun times with Mary Jane. I think you know the real choice. Number 5. Prey. Prey is a game that's had a pretty complicated history spanning almost 10 years. It began as a sequel to the 2006 game of the same name, first by 3D Realms, before the project was given to Human Head Studios until it was canned by publisher Bethesda, who would shortly change their minds and revive the Prey project, not as a sequel, but a reboot developed by Arcane Studios, the guys that gave us Dishonored. Prey is a sci-fi first-person shooter spliced with elements of RPGs and survival horror games. The game revolves around the aftermath of a conflict between humanity and a collective of alien species known as the Typhon, who are defeated and captured by the human race. The aliens are sent to a space station called Talos One that serves as both their prison and a research facility so that humanity can learn more about their extraterrestrial foes. The player controls Morgan Yu, a human unfortunate enough to be trapped aboard the station with the Typhon. In order to survive, Morgan will have to gain the diverse abilities the Typhon possesses, including the ability to transform into a mug. Yes, like a coffee mug. So get ready to get your caffeine on! The game will have a strong emphasis on narrative, taking a page from Mass Effect's book and including critical choices that will affect the game's story. The entire game is based in one large continuous space station environment, as opposed to containing areas separated by traditional mission structure, prompting the player to constantly backtrack and familiarize themselves with the station. Despite being different from the game it was originally based on, and Prey 2 for that matter, 2017's Prey is looking to be an awesome experience in its own right. Number 4, Sea of Thieves. Just when you thought Rare was reduced to nothing more than developing Wii Sports knockoffs and pseudo Mies for the Microsoft War Machine, the blokes from Britain have returned with a new IP that's looking to be the next killer app for the Xbox brand. Sea of Thieves is a first-person action-adventure game that allows players everywhere to embrace their inner pirate. The world of Sea of Thieves is too vast to explore by your lonesome. You'll have to grab your closest friends, I mean mateys, and commandeer a ship of your own. Teamwork is an absolute must in this game, especially when sailing your ship with one person steering the wheel, another navigating, and somebody keeping watch for obstacles and other elements from the crow's nest. Together, you and your crew of mateys will sail the seven seas, hunt for treasure, encounter and sink the ships of other pirate crews, fight monsters, and embrace your inner Jack Sparrow by chugging down a bottle of rum, or 12. Or 30, because why not? The game's already numerous possibilities become infinite, with Rare giving players the tools to create user-generated content that will have players living a pirate's life for years to come. Here's hoping it will more than make up for the sudden death of Scalebound. Spoiler, it, it won't. Number 3, Mass Effect Andromeda. The only thing Mass Effect fans have asked Bioware for more than a better ending to Mass Effect 3 is, well, nothing really. But have another Mass Effect game! On the 10 year anniversary of the original Mass Effect, Bioware is giving us the sort of sequel, Mass Effect Andromeda. Set 600 years after Commander Shepard chose between a green, red, and blue light, Mass Effect Andromeda follows the adventures of Sarah and Scott Ryder, two human pathfinders tasked with finding new and habitable planets for the human race to settle in the Andromeda galaxy. The game aims to combine the open environments and exploration of the original Mass Effect with the combat of Mass Effect 3 to create an experience Mass Effect fans have only ever dreamed of. Unlike the previous games in the series, players' abilities and weapons will not be limited by a character class. The game will allow the player to get creative and assign any combination of abilities they desire that can be swapped in and out at any time without having to start a new save file. Much like the original trilogy, the players will have control over a ship used to explore the galaxy called the Tempest. The Tempest is equipped with a six-wheeled ground vehicle used to explore a planet's vast terrain, appropriately called the Nomad. It's kind of like the Mako tank from the first Mass Effect, except it doesn't handle like a drunken rhino. As is expected with Mass Effect, Andromeda will be ridden with the familiar and beloved conversation trees, diverse choices, and exotic aliens to pork. We all love the Mass Effect universe, but if the Elcor aren't settling in the Andromeda galaxy as well, I don't even know why we're bothering to go there. With Bioware learning from criticism and implementing the best elements from the original trilogy, Mass Effect Andromeda appears as though it's going to be the definitive Mass Effect game. Sorry, Shepard. Number 2, Ukulele. Are you sick and tired of shooters dominating the AAA games market? Do you long for the days in which 3D platforming collectathons dominated the Nintendo 64? Are you disappointed that Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts wasn't a true sequel to Banjo Tooie? Well, look no further than Ukulele, a legally safe spiritual successor to the Banjo Kazooie franchise created by a merry band of ex Rare employees that served as key players in Kazooie and Tooie's development, and damn am I excited! Put simply, Ukulele is an attempt at a revival of the 3D platforming collectathons like Super Mario 64, Donkey 
Kong 64, and of course, Banjo-Kazooie, but updated and modernized for present day audiences, no vehicle building in sight. Ukulele plays exactly like a classic Banjo-Kazooie title. The player controls both Yuka the Chameleon, who assumes the same role as Banjo the Bear, and his flying female companion Laylee the Bat, aka the next gen Kazooie. Yuka and Laylee aren't complete clones, however. They've got a slew of new tricks and abilities up their sleeves, like tongue whipping and sonar scanning. The story follows the duo as they infiltrate the sinister corporation Hivery Towers and retrieve the world's literature known as Pages, totally not Jiggies, from the evil Dr. B and Dr. Quack who want to convert this literature into profit for their company. Real subtle, guys. Much like the Jiggies and Banjo, Yuka and Laylee must collect Pages in order to advance and unlock more levels. Here's hoping that Yuka Laylee can bring back one of gaming's greatest genres to a generation that never had the chance to appreciate the greatness of collectathons. Oh, and do try to 100% it the old-fashioned way. No looking up YouTube walkthroughs. Unless it's mine. Look, I kickstarted the game. I believe that was one of my backer perks. Number 1. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild What was once the Wii U's swan song now also marks a new beginning for Nintendo as one of the first major titles to release for their intriguing new handheld console hybrid, the Switch. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild intends to bridge the gap between the 3D Zelda games we have become so accustomed to since Ocarina of Time launched in 1998 and the original Legend of Zelda that released on the NES over 30 years ago. At the start of the game, you're placed within the biggest overworld ever built for a Zelda game, more than 10 times bigger than the overworld featured in The Legend of Zelda the Twilight Princess. Unlike Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, Breath of the Wild doesn't hold your hand with a guided tour of Hyrule. It's more akin to the original Legend of Zelda in which the player had little to no instruction, forcing them to explore the world for themselves to discover dungeons and other secrets. That being said, Breath of the Wild allows the player to tackle each dungeon in whichever order they choose, allowing for more unique and diverse experiences amongst players. Also, it might make for the coolest Zelda speedruns out there. There's more to this world than Ocarina of Time's Hyrule Field or Wind Waker's large but mostly empty oceans. It's a living, breathing world World filled to the brim with horses to tame, wildlife to hunt, food to cook, and interactive elements in the environment to be discovered. In another first for the Zelda series, Breath of the Wild will feature some full voice acting beyond Link's typical yeah, strat that will add some life to those long blocks of dialogue text. No random YouTube commenter, Wand of Gamillion and Faces of Evil don't count. We don't speak of those ever. At its core, Breath of the Wild is a celebration of the 30 plus year run of one of gaming's most beloved franchises, implementing the best of every major Zelda title into one extraordinary package. There you have it, our 9 most anticipated video games of 2017. How many games on the list are you looking forward to? Are there any 2017 releases you think should have made our list? Be sure to civilly sound off in the comments and let us know which new releases you'll be devoting your spare time to in 2017. And if you like this video, be sure to slap a like on it. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to smack that subscribe button to be the first to know when new videos will be dropping. And thanks for watching.